So hello and welcome to uh, ooh, season three, episode two. I can't believe I've forgotten already. Season three, episode two. I'll do that again. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to leave yeah. that in. You're not on it, Gary. Uh, shut up. So, <laughs> so hello and welcome to season three, episode two of the podcast. Hope you guys are well. Um, we are here this week with, uh, well, there's five of us this week. Dave's here. Um, hello, Dave. Hello. Um, but um, no Paul, unfortunately. He's had to work late, so he, he can't make it. But he's promised he'll be back next week. So um, before we start, um, I thought we'd just have a quick delve into the comments that we got from last week. Uh, there's just a couple I wanted to say. I want to give a big shout out to Paul Hill, Jeff Heron, Ken Powell, Justin Crane and Ski with Mike, who'd all heard of Tin Burgers, Daz. I know, I kind of read them in the comments. Yeah, yeah but they, they may have heard of them as any of them actually admitted to eating them. Well, that's a, that's a whole different matter. That is a whole yeah. different story, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, and I didn't, I didn't realise until I had that, you know you get that PTSD moment, because I searched them up to prove to myself, and they come in gravy. Oh, no. <laughs> Which makes it worse, really. Oh, faggots. Oh, I love Tim faggots. Faggots. Oh, I like faggots. Yeah, yeah we've what? heard. What? Do you like anything what? that's not in a tin? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank I'm back. Thanks, Dave. Um, <laughs> no, well, the thing is, you see, I've got to, I'm going to say this at this point. I watched last week's and I thought, well, I'm redundant because Sam is now occupying the quietly considered seat, the, the intellectual input. And I thought, well, that, that's me out of a job. But what I'll do is be abusive instead. <laughs> Yeah, but you bring the sarcasm as well, Dave. So you can you can just raise the sarcasm game just a little bit, and then we'll be we'll be fine. We're back and okay, hang, hang, on, game hang on. on a minute. If you're being abusive, what do I do? Oh, then yeah, I'm I redundant. Oh no, you just rant. Oh yeah, yeah not, you're okay. the rant. Oh, I I saw. I, I'm sorry. I can't remember who who left the comment, but someone said in the comments that apparently I'm the new David Griffiths, oh. and I oh. You wish. Well, that's, Sorry, that's, David. That's <laughs> praise indeed, mate. That is. Yeah, you, yeah. You wish, Sam. You wish. <laughs> uh, dear. Anyway, uh, back to the comments. Can you do a Chinese impression? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. I also, and I'm just going to apologise in advance because, as you can see, the fire is on, and I have to get up and put the wood in the fire. So when I just wander off, you know where I'm going. I've got my trousers on. I've, I've got my trousers. Well, I've got me me faithful pajamas on. No. So. All right then. I've also realised I've forgotten my beer. Anyway, we'll, beer, we'll do, let, let's just beer. let's just a bit beer. Oh, beer. Yeah, now let's just get through the comments and then I'll go and get a beer and then we'll start beer. <laughs> I've got his beer. It's like a little Winnie the Pooh. He's, he's little... Anyway, tune in next time for some comments. <laughs> <laughs> You leave my little Winnie the Pooh alone. Anyway, <laughs> comments, comments. So we had what we've, Sam, we've upset somebody. Um, Hugh Alban, he said, on the subject of club judging, take a crack at it yourself. Very easy to bash it until you stood in front of an audience and had to talk about their precious images. And yes, I am an active judge here in the Southwest. So, um, sorry, Hugh. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was sincere wasn't it every judge i've experienced pretty much has been poor so but i'm, I'm sure you're the exception to the rule in fact i'm going to do snapshots with you because he has a, uh, a youtube channel so i might have a chat with him about that then so um but yeah um i, I mean if i can just raise that subject again because i've experienced judges and to be fair despite the fact that one or two are pretty negative and don't seem to realize that some of the entries are from new photographers that are just finding their feet. Some of the judges that we had at the club that I used to attend were actually really, really good. They, they treated their critiques sensitively and they were mindful of the fact that, you know, they were hoping not to discourage people that were just getting into competitions and finding their feet. So, you know, hats off to the ones that bear that in mind and, and really do their best not to be too harsh. Yep, yeah, I love camera judges too. Um. <laughs> you love <laughs> <bastard. laughs> So that, so Hugh, apologies. Um, 
I've got another comment here from Carl Richards. He said, shame I missed you all that photography show. Did he? Didn't say that, did he? Show. He didn't say photography <laughs> show, show, did he? <laughs> <laughs> I did that in a video the other day. And you've not even had your bear yet. I did that, yeah. I did that in a video the other day. I went, I'm going to take some snapshots. And I thought it sounded like Steve McLaren. <laughs> in touch. Anyway, Carl Richards says, shame I missed you all at the photography show. Well, I say I missed you all. I did see Daz, but I blinked and he disappeared. And, and that is you in a nutshell. I, I do do like, that, yeah, don't I? Even yeah. when we all go out together, you know, I just, yeah. uh, I do kind of tend to wander off and I do apologise. Look, I wander off to go and sort the wood out, sort the light out, but when we're out together, yeah, I'm always wandering off and, and losing everybody. So, uh, mm. yeah. Well, we lost you before we even got in, didn't we? Yeah. Garrett, we, yeah. You know, we, we're just literally walking through and all of a sudden turn around, you'd gone. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was on a mission. I, I needed to try and find uh, that little camera bag. And I can't relax until I've got what I what I need to get. Then after that, then I chill out. You see, so, or spend yeah, any time was, with your friends. Oh, apparently, so. sorry, <laughs> I'm out with you about one o'clock just for you, just in time for you to bitch about that burger. <laughs> let's not go back down, down that route again. Now. Let's not go back down that route again. All right, so let's get on with some topics, shall we? So first up is one from Sam, uh, and he says, uh, if you could invent one new function to add to your camera which doesn't currently exist, what would it be? So, Sam, why don't you start on this? Because obviously you've been giving it some thought, hopefully. Uh, yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, well, I was sort of, sort of thinking as to where the next stage of camera development would go and what sort of features we would want in our cameras because I kind of feel like cameras have got pretty much everything in them. Um, and then I thought, well, actually, probably the thing that I would add in would be the opportunity to have kind of apps and things running in your camera so things like photo pills or sun seeker so that rather than having it on your phone all the time you could have uh one of those charts which shows you where the sun's going to rise and you could compose your shot in the camera and then you'd be able to see exactly where the sun was going to be rise be rising and i thought that would actually be quite a useful feature mm. um so i think that would probably be be my answer has anyone else got any anything they'd like to to add to that? Sky replacement. What in camera? In camera sky yeah, replacement. Yeah, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Can you imagine the debates around it? Yeah, no, I a straight out of camera, mate. Straight out of camera. <laughs> Could have an AI function, couldn't you? And never take your lens cap off. <laughs> actually, actually, that would be a really useful feature. Yeah. Um, to start, a little warning that told you when your lens cap was on on the back of a camera, yeah. so that you knew. I mean, apart from just the black screen. Oh, yes. Actually, do you know what? I've got one. I've got one. You could have a little, like, you know, like Siri or Alexa, and they could ask you, every time you switch your camera on, they could say to you, have you got the right settings here? Have you left your ISO on 800? Should you be on shutter priority? That sort of thing. I think I'd have that, because the amount of times that I forget, definitely, that would be mine. Mm. Yeah, I must admit, I do that because I'm switching from landscape to uh, to wildlife and then I'll, I'll, I'll forget and then I'll pick the and I'll pick the camera up because there's you know, a bird that's just landed and I'll press the shutter and it just goes beep 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 <laughs> counting down for 10 yeah. seconds oh, no. <laughs> and then the bird's gone and then all oh, right okay I better change all these settings yeah do you okay. not save them on a on a custom setting though like because I've got a custom for birds and, and one for landscapes and one for taking a picture of the dog on the beach. No, so I basically I just set um, my auto ISO within a range uh, and that I do play around with, I must admit, because obviously if it's really bright, then I'll, I'll set it for a, uh, you know, between I don't know, 100 and, and 800 or 100 and 1000. If it's really dark, you know, I'll obviously up that range. Um, but then it's normal. My camera is normally always set on f seven point one, f six point three to seven point one. But seven point one is my sharpest aperture on that on that lens. So really, all I am just adjusting is the uh, is the shutter speed. So it's always set on manual, but predominantly, you know, the the auto ISO takes care of itself. Uh, the aperture is pretty much set, so yeah, I, I'm just playing around with shutter speed. That's it. So you I, shoot, I, you shoot birds on manual, do you? Yes. Ah, okay, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, how do you do it, Gail? Aperture or, uh, or shutter priority? Shutter priority. Yeah, because I know that I'm going to shoot wide open regardless, which is six point three. So I just set the I set my ISO range, usually like say between a hundred and about a thousand. And then I'll just basically uh, adjust the, the uh, shutter speed to compensate for the light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I right. I I find the custom settings really useful because um, obviously Hannah and I share cameras, um, so we've got the three sort of main custom settings, and I use two of them because I have one set up for landscapes, which is all manual ISO one hundred f eleven, um, and then. The wildlife settings, which is um, uh, aperture priority, um, sh sorry, no, sh uh, shutter speed priority, and then Hannah has her wildlife settings on another custom function. So I, it, it it does just make life so much easier because you can just switch it to your custom setting, and it's all pretty mm. much ready to go. Mm. Well, perhaps when we're all together um, in the lakes, perhaps I'll I'll, I'll have a look at your uh, shutter speed and aperture priority. And see how, how it differs from the way I'm doing it. Yeah, we, we should maybe mention that we're all meeting up in the lakes because uh, that. Don't say when. Don't say when. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but what? Because everyone's going to descend on yeah, the lakes yeah, to meet yeah. us. Will come and, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Just be a, You're still desperate for somebody to recognise you, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be leaving my. I'm going to set up a, a, a live 360 that everyone can join, so you can see exactly where I am all the time. If you, if you happen to want to bump into me, any any time of day or night. <laughs> I'll, I'll just, you know, put a message out saying I'm out and about, come find me. Oh, that sounds really dodgy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> have said it's that. usually in a public toilet somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, shall I talk about my... Um, <laughs> Please do. My idea for a camera. P Please do. I've had some... Because it's nice, this, because when you put these in the chat, I can think about my answer. But when you get us on the spot, I ain't got a bloody clue. So I've come up with a real blue sky off the wall idea. And this is based on woodland photographers that always moan that they can't find compositions in, in a chaotic woodland. So it would never work and never be created. But anyway, what about if you had a camera that you was preloaded with, with like all of the sort of good woodland compositions from all the top woodland photographers. So it's got like a database of, of great little compositions in it. You, you put your tripod in the middle of a chaotic woodland scene and you stick it on the top and it does a 360 sort of review of the whole area. It scans the whole area around and it looks up where the potential compositions are. And then you get this Remember holographic the... picture of Simon Baxter going, don't bother, it's going to be shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Could> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. No, but then what I was thinking was, do you remember that game? I'm, I'm old enough to remember this, Some of um, Sam probably won't, called Magic Robot. Do you remember that magic robot game where you had a robot in the middle? Do you remember that? Oh, somebody, it's like burgers in tin, isn't it? Somebody will remember. You've got, you've got a robot, you put it in the middle. You ask this robot a question, effectively. You put it in the middle and it sits on a magnet and it spins around automatically and points to the answer. It's supposed to be magic, but it's, it's not, obviously. Um, but my idea was, of course, when it spots the composition, the camera will spin round and just lock onto the composition and say, there you go, buddy, take your shot. There you go. There was there was a there was a feature that you or a gadget you could buy to put on your hot shoe called Arsenal, and they even brought out a version two of it, and it was mm. a sort of camera computer. Was this from Google? That sort out, no, no, it was a, it was a it was a sort of Indiegogo Kickstarter okay. sort of thing, but it was being really pushed at one stage about three or four years ago. Arsenal, the next generation of camera AI. And I remember looking at it and thinking, well, that's just taking all the fun out of photography, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's sort of, yeah, 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 you got the, the wrong shutter speed there, mate. Uh, this database of expert, because it had a database in it, saying, oh, well, with this light, this is, these are the exposure settings you should have. And I just thought, well, I might as well just, like, get a robot, send it into the woods or down the coast or whatever, bring me some pictures back, would you mind? You know, I'll just sit here and drink moose poops. So, so this has already been <laughs> essentially invented. Yeah, yeah. And, and as I say, they brought out a version 2. They didn't plug version 2 as hard as version 1, but I think they'd run out of marketing budget by then. As far, I've never seen anybody with one. Yeah. If I did, I'd just fall about laughing. But... You know, it, it, it was a thing and it was being really pushed on social media about three or four years ago, just before the pandemic. I, imagine calling something that's supposed to be good at anything Arsenal. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, you stop that. You stop that right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sorry, guys. No, I was thinking about this question, and, and, and I couldn't think of anything, if I'm honest with you. And, and I started thinking about, you know, like three of us obviously use Sony's, uh, and, you know, and the Sony's menu is just like vast. Um, but it, ma- it makes no difference what you shoot with, you know, what make of camera you shoot with. I wonder how much of that camera's functions in a percentage do we actually use? Mm. Because I reckon I only use five, ten percent of what that camera's capable of anyway. Matt, yeah, well, I, mean, I think we're, Go on. I mean, I think we're all creatures of habit, aren't we? Just, you know, like we just set up the camera how we how we like it and it takes reasonable photos yeah. with it and we leave it there normally. Have you got the facility to put stuff on a custom menu, yeah. the stuff you use? Yes. So yeah. I, I, I've yeah. got that on mine and I was, I've got the you know, new camera all excited. I'll set up my custom menu. What are the things I use the most out of all these thousands of options? And in the end up, I had five things on it. <laughs> exactly. I've got, I've got one. Oh, yeah. yeah, format. Format, yeah. I've got, <laughs> That's uh, it. Yeah. That yeah. is my custom menu. Saying that, though, talking about convoluted menus, here's an actual idea that might might work. What about voice control? What about, what about like, an intelligent, uh, you know, software system where you could say, you know, call it Sony, Sony bring up the ISO Sony drop ISO to 100 oh, Sony take the shot yeah but you don't have yeah. to use and it and then oh. when when we're in the lakes I'll walk past your yeah. camera Sony yeah. F22 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I've got another one that I think would be quite good for street photography do you remember when we were kids and you had like you know your weekly comic Wizard and Chips or whatever? There'd always be an advert in on the back page for X-ray specs. Uh, street photography, X-ray. <laughs> Bit cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was, you know, I think I think there was a camera that did that, and it marketed itself as night vision, but it actually it actually could you could see through clothing with it. Night vision camera. <laughs> really? I'm sure there was. This is a while Bye back. Now. <laughs> this is a while back. I might just be making that up, but I don't I think, think I might am. Have been, yeah. I don't think I am. You clearly Googled it. Yeah. Well, don't. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, so the answer for me is I, I just can't think of anything, and I don't think there's anything else that I'd desperately want, actually. I'm quite happy with where we are. I sound quite like a Luddite now, don't I? Saying, oh, everything that's been invented has already been invented. We don't need to push there, on. There but. is one thing that I genuinely want, because with my camera, you've got built-in ND filters, and it goes up to ND64, uh, so six stops. And I just I want them to do a 10-stop version. It's just not quite enough, because I use 10-stop quite often. I just think, why, why stop at ND64? What the hell's wrong with you? Ah, oh, now that that appeals to me. That's the first thing that's been said tonight that does appeal to me. Something that you, you know, you bolt onto your camera that would be nice to have kind of built into the camera. Hmm. So yeah, I agree with Dave there. So how does that work, Dave? Does is, does it work by taking lots of pictures and then blending them? Together? Yes, it's it's standard computational stuff, um, but it does output a RAW file, not a JPEG, and that's that's the winner for me because. I think there are other algorithms dotted around the camera world, but they tend to spit out JPEGs. And um, that would be no use to me at all. Here's my question coming on from last week. We were t- you talking about doing stuff in camera. Infrared, yeah? Infrared, you have to have something done to your camera to make it infrared. Yeah. Why can't um, you just take... Uh, um, it might sound really stupid. Why can't you just take a photo normally and convert it to infrared in post what why can't there must be something that can that can because i got oh, no way it's doing the wave next isn't it yeah yeah so you couldn't do it in post could you forget that unless i guess <laughs> <laughs> i don't know have you ever thought of a career as a scientist <laughs> no <laughs> oh actually do you know what i did i i started a degree this is a true story I started a degree in biochemistry and biotechnology 
and one of the very sort of one of the very early lectures was it was an experiment with e coli and i got into trouble for for sucking the end of my pen whilst whilst doing the experiment on e coli so no i'm not cut out to be a scientist <laughs> neither am i and i am one <laughs> what were you going to say sam you were just about to say something about infrared uh i can't remember oh sensors i was wondering whether you could extend for the wavelengths that the sensors can pick up um, I don't know, maybe you could have one which does both the, inf the whole spectrum, both visible and non-visible. That's surely possible, coming from the scientist. I wonder if, I wonder if like, Sony or someone's listening here and we're going to get... Next camera that comes out is yeah. going to be, like, have Alexa on it, it's going to do AI, sky replacement, infrared... Please don't do that. Oh, yeah, there's a bloke in Japan scribbling notes as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I've got an email... They want me to review it. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got an email the other day from someone who wants me to review um, some some specs, some smart specs that have got that's got a built-in camera and and uh, augmented reality function. Are they see-through clothes? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't found out yet. So you know, obviously, straight away I turned him down and said, "Let me know more about it. I'm really interested." Um, but you know, no. Are you are you going to review it? It, well, they, if they get back to me and say, yeah, then I will, yeah. I think you should do. Well, I was thinking street photography. How cool would they be for street photography? Because you don't have to have a camera. You could just, like, literally look around and snap away. That, But that takes power yeah. into yeah. another yeah. level. <laughs> it's it? very creepy. Yeah, I was, think, I was actually thinking more video, you know, like when you're hiking and you kind of got, got like a... Well, rather having a GoPro on your GoPro on your chest, or I just thought, oh, that would be pretty cool. I wasn't thinking about photography. Yes, that's what I was thinking as well. I was thinking for video. It'd be really good for video <laughs> if you're hiking up a mountain or something. I don't, street, this this whole street photography. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Are you going to hike up a mountain to review it? Because I would tune in for that. Yeah, so would I. <laughs> yeah, but I, the, the the kicker is is that I die at the top and the review never gets put out. So. No, I don't, this whole street photography thing about people being whatever, we've had, you know, this was discussed on Twitter a while back, and I put a video out. I think it's only it's only creepy if you're creepy. As, it, it, no, but if you're going around, if I were to wear those glasses, for instance, and every shot I took was an innocent street photography shot, there's nothing creepy about that. It's only creepy if, if you're going around, you know, looking down women's cleavage or taking photos that you shouldn't take, you know? Walking around in your boxer shorts. Yeah, stoking your fire. <laughs> Is that a euphemism? I wonder if there's a point to be made where if, if you're a photographer walking around with a camera, it's clear what you're doing. Yeah, but um, a lot of a lot of street photographers don't do that, do they? Because it's a little bit, you know. I think it's it's normally done at a distance, you know, where people don't actually see you with the camera, or some people are even more brazen and actually push the camera in people's faces I, as i say I, i'm i'm joking aside obviously i don't think there's, there's nothing kind of like you know untoward about street photography i think if it's done well i think it's a fantastic genre i'm just not comfortable with it that's mm. all mm. you know it's just who i am yeah no i was more referring there was a twitter post about it and there were quite a few several people i was going to say funnily enough but not funnily enough several people and a lot of them were women saying that they felt it was an intrusion of their privacy yeah. uh, and it was wrong. Uh, but I think it's interesting that people that do street photography, you know, present company accepted, but there's this thing about, oh, I've got to have a small discreet camera. So it's not overt. The whole point is that they're trying to hide the fact they're doing photography. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were there with a great big, I don't know, 5D Mark IV and a 600mm lens, you know, yeah, I'm taking some pictures. What the hell do you think I'm doing with this? It it, it would be, as Sam said, it, it would be more of a, you'd be broadcasting what you're up to. Yeah. And then it gives people the option to say, don't point that at me, mate, or you'd be wearing it. Do you know, when we when we went out, Gail, I mean, I've only ever done street photography once, and that was with you. Yeah. But you know what? I actually thought to myself, what would be good if I got myself like a high-vis vest? This is straight up. I thought... A high-vis vest with street photographer on it. 
Because mm. and then I, I I seriously contemplated getting that before we went out, just so everybody knew, so that no one could say to me, "What the hell are you doing?" And then I've got to try to explain. So was that what? That's what you were worried about. You were worried about the confrontation. Yeah. Were you? And did you yeah. feel? Did no, you feel so much, wrong? Not, no, not so much the confrontation, because I don't think many people would possibly kind of come up to. I don't know. I just I feel I, I just I don't feel comfortable taking photos of people that's but you that, get you get local residents coming up saying bloody hell look at westminster council spending money on bloody photographers yeah because you look like you work for the council yeah. wouldn't you <laughs> yeah potholes mate i'm just photographing <laughs> yeah, the potholes yeah, exactly yeah. yeah i'm literally a street photographer that and wedding photography would be like the the, the last on my list just because it involves people but but wedding photography people have almost given you permission by coming going to the wedding whereas with street photography I, i'm i just find it interesting because i don't have these thoughts at all i don't have any i don't have any thought that i shouldn't be out taking photos or worrying about what other people think because i honestly I, i'd never do that bruce gilden thing and go up into people's faces and if i ever wanted to take a portrait of someone i'd ask them first but i don't consider street photography the way that i do it to be candid street photography i consider it to be urban landscape photography with a human in it because i'm always looking at the cop well often i'm looking at the composition first and then trying to find a human element rather than going and taking a photograph of that person yeah sometimes i do sometimes i do but rarely so no and as i say i'm i'm, I'm not knocking it because done well and you do do it well done well i think it's a fantastic genre and some cracking photos Hmm. well yeah okay well we've done we, we kind of veered off subject there because we were we were talking about cameras weren't we and then it sort of ended up into something else so should we should we move on to another topic does anyone need a wee what dad <laughs> what are you looking at that for dad? what dad's what's up dad <laughs> nothing i just thought that, that was aimed, topic? i just thought that was aimed at me no does anybody does anybody need a wee oh yeah that was aimed at you <laughs> yeah exactly that's what well because you're the one who always goes for a wee <laughs> do you need a wee guys or come shall we carry no on? i've got me incontinent pants on oh okay so all i'm right. all right okay all right okay so actually again let's move on to one from you Daz, which is um what luxury item or gadget could you never give up and you've said phones and computers are exempt so other than phones and computers what luxury item or gadget could you never give up that you can go first mate right well do you know what i'm gonna because <clears throat> i because i must admit i forgot i asked that question and when you put it in the group i thought oh i better think of something um because obviously i asked the question and then i started thinking about what is a luxury item and then i went completely off road as i normally do and uh, bear with me on this but yep. i'm thinking I kind of almost feel like, you know, quite sorry for the younger generation, say, below us. Because when you think about what, say, our parents, and I'm not talking cameras here or anything, but I'm, I'm so when you think about our parents or our grandparents, they had a totally different idea on what a luxury item was compared to what we do and especially what our kids do. You know, so when they bought their, or they rented their first house, or they bought their first house, you know, I was thinking, you know, a car would have been a luxury item to them. A washing machine might have been a luxury item. I and mean, we didn't have a video player for a couple of, two or three years until after they kind of come out. Where you think of all the kids today, they're grown up with mobile phones, computers, dishwashers, washing machines cars and all and so when they buy their first house all the things that we classed as luxury items it's almost like a necessity to them don't you agree mm. 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 so I, I i was trying to think about what what i class as as a luxury item and what i just take totally for granted now I mean, it's quite a boring answer, but the only thing that I could think of that I wouldn't want anyone to take away from me is my camera, because that is that is that's something that I don't need. 
you know, I was thinking about all, all my power tools. I thought, well, I can't work without them. Or my van, but oh, I can't work without that van. You know, and we said computers and, and, and phones is, you know, so, so all I could think about was, was my camera because everything else I kind of use every day. It's more of a, a necessity in my life than an actual luxury. Okay. That was it. Do you want to know mine? Go on. Fresh burgers. <laughs> Fresh burgers? <laughs> yeah. Mate, that should be a necessity. Not no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm only joking. Mine would be um, digital radio. I love digital radio. I drive everywhere I go in the car. The last three cars I've had, I know it's not, not so much anymore because it's almost comes as standard, but the last couple of cars I've had, one of the points that, that I had to have in it was digital radio. If I didn't have DAB, then I wasn't... But you can, you can get an app on your phone for that, can't you? Yeah, you can now, but I'm talking back then, you couldn't. So digital radio for me in the car, that's a, that is a, uh, a luxury that I couldn't live without. Absolute Radio 90s, by the way, just in case you're interested. Uh, right. Well, it, it is more of a necessity, but I wouldn't be without it. It's my coffee machine. So, you know, when you sort of... We've done Desert Island Discs in the past, and what would your luxury item be? So I'm going to class it as my luxury item because I would take that to the island with me and the ship that I was wrecked in would have a hold full of coffee pods. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But that, that, that would be it for me because I, I really I couldn't function without... A, a, an obscene number of coffees per day yeah that is actually that's mm. a good shout mate yeah mm. that is a good shout um, I was going to say I'll stay on the same theme as Dave then with mine because mine's kitchen related as well I do mm. like a bit of cooking and knocking up the odd meal or two so mine would be two items that I've got in the kitchen that I wouldn't be able to do without that's a really sharp cook's knife every decent cook needs a really sharp cook's knife but the other thing is a uh, I've got a ninja frying pan <laughs> and I tell you what I've had so many frying pans over the years that keep bloody sticking all the time and, and there's nothing worse than, than sort of doing a stir fry or whatever and it's bloody sticking and I've got this really and it's expensive it's a ninja one but it's brilliant and I wouldn't do without it so a really good quality frying pan we've got okay. a, a ninja where you make smoothies Mm. Have you seen them? They're really mm. good, actually. Well, my, it's not mine; it's my son's, but he's in Australia now, so we've kind of claimed it. <laughs> but they, they are pretty cool. So I think Ninja's actually quite a good brand. Yeah, I've got my because I saw Nick Livesey posted he'd got a new toy, which I think was one of these air fryers. Um, oh, oh, we've yeah. got one of those. Jan Jan bought a Ninja air fryer a few weeks ago, and I use it every single day for my lunch, They're and it's absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. Well, okay. I bought one, and the chips are shit. <laughs> Did you show any burgers in them? Well, you probably could, but I tried cooking chips in them. They're awful. I just went back to the deep fat fryer. But was it a ninja one, though? That's the point. No. I, I was going oh, to say, okay. the, the ninja uh, blender, the, the the smoothie maker, does it, does it chop all your... Like, does it throw up, throw all the things up in the air and, and then they drop it in? Yeah, it's like Benny Harner in your kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Benny Hill. <laughs> <laughs> no but that ninja air fryer is stunning jan said i've bought a new air fryer and i said okay then and and i said how much was that then and and after much like you know threatening to cut her off and all this that and the other she confessed how much it cost and i thought okay then well that's your christmas and birthday presents for the next four years <laughs> Yeah, but actually, to be fair, it's stunning. And we, I, she said, I oh, bought it because of like energy prices. We actually don't use the cooker, so um, the the oven and the grill and the cooker haven't been used since we got it. Wow. And given that that's on a thirty amp circuit and the Ninja just plugs into the wall, mm. it's obviously using a lot less juice. No, we we was considering it, Dave. Actually, we've been considering one for a while. We said, oh, when we get the new kitchen done, we we will buy one. So you've just really reconfirmed um mm. me getting one well done and so uh anyway welcome to the kitchen pub <laughs> yeah, <cast. laughs> oh hang on hang on i've got an email <laughs> someone wants me to review a ninja ninja foodie <laughs> i think we just we just did didn't we yeah yeah <laughs> so what what's your luxury gadget sam my my luxury item I think would probably if 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 a, if I'm not allowed to have a computer and I'm not allowed to have 
a phone. I'd probably no, have No, you are like, allowed. You're oh, allowed I am. To, you're allowed to have a computer and uh, a phone. Oh, that kind of undoes what I was going to say. I was going to say I'd have an, an MP3 player with like all my favorite tracks on it, but I don't need that if I've got a computer and phone. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you balls oh. that right up, so. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, I would have to go with guitar, maybe. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. Yeah. Because mm. then when my, my phone runs out of battery, I've got. I've got a source of music. You can't contact anyone on your guitar, you know. You can't, <laughs> you can, yeah, you can't can. use it as a phone. You can. Okay. Oh, okay. You can make it gently weep. It gently oh. weeps across so the ether. Are we, are we also? So, would a washing machine be a luxury? Is, is that a luxury item? Well, it would be if you're your own dad, as you were saying earlier. I know. That's like, like, you know, so that's that, I mean, would I really want to take my pants down to the river and beat them against the rock? <laughs> Well, no, I don't no, no. care what Jan does with mine. No, she can no, wash no. them as she wants. <laughs> <laughs> don't bother me no. at all. I don't know. So I might have to give up the camera now. You don't wash your own pants. <coughs> don't, no, but don't, I would don't do. try and make that out. No, but I would do. You <laughs> chuck them in the basket and they automatically appear back in the drawer a few days later. They do do that, actually, yeah. I don't think that... white goods are luxury items. I think you're all right. All right, yeah. Yeah, I think you're all right. I think white goods are essentials. I don't think they're luxuries. Because right, okay. everyone has them, don't they? A luxury is something that not everyone else has. You know, my mum would say a dishwasher would be a luxury item. Ah, but then, then, got a dishwasher. But then that, that's maybe that generation. Maybe. You know, they considered the white goods luxuries because maybe they didn't have them. Well, That's I should be watching this, so I'll ask her to put a comment yes, in please and do. say, come yeah. on, Mum, tell yeah. me what your luxury item yeah. would be. Yeah, actually, everyone's welcome if you want to put in mm. a, a comment. Uh, for your luxury. But I've got to say this before we go on any further. Where's your room gone, Jamie? I noticed this last week. Where's your room? I'm still in yeah. it. <laughs> Have you just Where's shrunk you from? we are really small. Well, I was looking at it thinking, because what I was actually thinking was, is, you know, I could put anything on that white screen behind Jamie, and you'd never know. I could just because it's almost like a green screen, and then and then yeah, I thought, and, yeah, but same thing. And then, well, apart from it's not green, and then I thought, where's his room gone? Where's your, have you moved? Had a move round? Uh, I've moved myself round. Yeah, the room stayed where it is. <laughs> I've just <laughs> repositioned. Oh, we myself. used to love your stripy walls yeah. and your gay Christmas decorations. No, the stripy walls went ages ago. Uh, it got redecorated ages ago. The um, the sort of. Uh, rusty coloured sofa sofa bed is still to my right here yes uh, okay. everything else is all replaced the new printer is on its own table and desk over there but okay. now I've just repositioned myself so this is this wall here behind me will in a not too distant future have some of my prints on it because I've now got everything ready printers ready to go I've profiled the printer I'm waiting for photo speed to send me some custom profiles and then I'm rocking and rolling, and I'm going to then put some stuff on this wall behind me. But at the moment, yes, um, it's just literally a 90-degree movement of the desk, Gary. That's all it is. You just look like a 1970s newsreader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was all. That was all. Okay. Just glad to know you, still, you, you, you haven't moved into a hotel or anything. You're still at home. <laughs> no, just, I haven't just, made that. Okay. Oh, I've not sorry. been kicked out. I'm okay, right. just, just... Yeah, he's in a travel lodge with a sharp knife and a frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Have we finished this bit now? Because I want a wee. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. Actually, I forgot to say, um, like, what we've we been up to this week. We haven't even talked about that, have we? Um, has anyone been up to anything exciting this week? Yeah. yeah, I had a really good day out yesterday with a client and we went to Llandwin Island and when people book months in advance it's always a bit hit and miss and it was absolutely fabulous conditions I was so happy for him he got a hat full of really good photographs and um, it made my week because oh, as I say it's always a bit hit and miss and <clears throat> you kind of get what you're given. I was out the week before last with a, a really nice couple up from Weymouth. And we went up into the hills and they're really good photographers. And what I noticed about that, it was, it was it must be kind of like what you experienced, Sam, where your partner is equally into photography. So I took them up into the hills and then they've got their tripod side by side. 
and they were just chatting away and, and it was just it was like a fly on the wall they didn't need me once I sort of got them into the location and I just thought I wish the Mrs G was into photography because that was so nice they they were like totally in tune uh, so yeah that, but I just got lucky with the conditions we anyway, had great conditions here today I don't know what it was like with you guys but um, yeah, I know. <coughs> Ely and Cambridge oh that was fantastic yeah. it was uh, fog wasn't it, <coughs> it it's, got, it's fog. got to be really annoying when it's foggy and you don't get out isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. It is. yeah. 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 I managed to get out this morning in the fog did you, did you? I did yeah it was great yeah, I found this new Bugger. wood. It's really weird. I found, so I, I was I was heading off to this other woodland on I think it was Monday or Tuesday, and my my in laws had always gone on about this wood that's on the way. Oh, you should stop at this wood. And I'm a bit like, yeah, whatever, you know, because I, I never listen to anyone. And anyway, as I drove past it, I was like, that's the wood they're on about. I might just pull in there and have a look. And it's brilliant. It's absolutely fantastic. It's only twenty minutes away from my house. I went there again this morning and did some uh, woodland photography. It's got birds. It's got like the, like the other day there was like uh, someone just this old boy said, "Oh, I've just laid some seed down on the on this thing. If you want, if you're taking photos, I saw my camera." I walked up to it. There was just birds everywhere. I was like, "Jesus!" And, and I I just got a seat out. Literally went back home, got my big lens, got a seat out, and just sat like. I don't know, probably six or seven meters away from these birds, just and they were just flitting down, shooting them in the trees. Brilliant. So yeah. I tell you what, I, I I must admit, since I've moved over more to the wildlife, especially when you go to places like say Wickham Fen or Titchwell or any kind of any sort of nature reserve, it's great chatting to people. Mm. I know you mm. kind of almost like you mm. want to get on and 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 kind of take your photos and explore. But if you just take like say, five minutes out of your day to speak mm. to people, they've got mm. so much knowledge and yeah. they're so happy to share it with you. I mean, not all everyone's photographers because most of them are just like bird watchers, just twitchers. But, you know, they'll tell you what they've spotted. And oh, if you go up, up there a little bit and that's where, you know, they kind of tend to hang out and this one will come here. And it, oh, fantastic people. They really are. I've got so much yeah. time for... Uh, for, for wildlife enthusiasts, mm. Han, Hannah and I did a did a walk. Um, I think it was probably a couple of months ago now, but it was for as a, a charity that sort of raises awareness of protecting hen harriers, and we did a we did a, a walk um, around one of the sort of slightly notorious grouse moors in the Cairngorms. So we we popped along to go and join them, and it was absolutely brilliant. And it was probably about fifty or so people, and we just went for this walk across this moor and as you were saying down it's just every getting that sort of insight into their knowledge and they were all bird watchers yeah um i don't think there are any photographers there um but their, their knowledge is just so incredible and they would see something which to me would just look like a blur just fly across and we'd be like oh that's a hen harrier and you get the binoculars out and it will be and they could just yeah. tell immediately what yeah. it was it's amazing big up the dog walkers in the woods they're all good people, aren't they? They're all good, friendly people. I got a, I got a big family of friends in Home Fen when I go around. They always see the dog walkers, always say hello to their dogs. I know the dogs by the name now. It's great, really good. Yeah, big up the dog walkers, and especially in the fog when the dog walk goes just underneath a tree and you got a lovely little person in your scene. Then. Always, always great. nice that. Yeah. Always nice. Do you remember when we went to? Um, where did we go to? Uh, oh God. Where did we go to, Daz? Where we we stopped off in the cafe and had that slice of cake on like New? It was right in the end, front end of a year. Wells, Wells on the Sea. That was it. Yeah. Do you remember wandering up there and with big lenses and like literally everyone's like, "Oh, what are you here to take? Yeah. What, what are you taking a photo? Oh, what, what have you spotted? Like, mm, yeah, some beach hurts, mate. Yeah. And we didn't actually have big lens. It was the seventy to yeah. two hundred. I think we yeah. had on. Yeah. But yeah. So many people were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What? What? You here's a photograph. No, we're here to photograph the landscape. It's interesting that Gary can't remember the name of the place. He refers to his <laughs> life in cake and burgers <laughs> with the milestones. Oh, do you remember that burger? Or oh, what about that cake? No, I remember it really well because I said to, to, to Gaz, I said. Do you want to, I said, I might around for a cup of tea. I said, do you want a, do a bit of cake? And he went, no, 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 I'm being really, really good. And I went, well, it's up to you. I said, I'm going to have a bit of cake. And he went, all right, then I'll have a <laughs> Like he was doing you a favour. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It, it was something like the 3rd of January. 
and that was my diet over for the year. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, just done. Yeah, you know when people normally say, well, I'll start on Monday. Yeah. Gary got to the 3rd of January, I'll start next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. Got to love it. Got to love it. You only live once, don't you? I certainly do. Just not for very long. Um, anyway, so <laughs> let's move on to another subject. This one is a photography subject. I did it again. Subject. <laughs> Shub- I'm, I'm worried. I'm, I think I might be having a stroke and no one's noticed. Um, this one, is, uh, we got an email in uh, from uh, Mark Taylor, who watches the podcast. And his question was, he, he said a few bits before this, but his question was, how many or what percentage of images that you take do you actually edit and then what percentage do you put on social media he says i get a bit of a come down after a shoot um as that's all the fun bit done do any of you feel the same way before we we answer that question can i just say to anyone that's uh, obviously watching or listening can you ask us a few more questions or come up with a few more topics because hmm. your ideas for topics are far better than ours yeah yeah. Or yours. Or mine. <laughs> or mine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the answer to that question, sorry, I've just butted in here, but like, again, I think it depends on what you're actually shooting. You know, I mean, the, if, if you're talking landscape photography, then I'd imagine the percentage of keepers would be a lot higher than if you were doing wildlife. I mean, I've gone out sometimes and, and I, I've shot a thousand photos and I've come home and there's not one of them that I would think, oh, that's kind of worthy of, hmm. I don't know, putting on social media or printing or something like that. You know, I mean, I might, out of a thousand photos, if I come away with two that I'm really happy with, then that's a good day for me. In, with wildlife, definitely. Yeah, yeah totally yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. But I would imagine with landscape, I, I don't know, 50%, 40%, 50%. What, that you would edit and do something with? Yeah. Okay. I'd, say wow. about, I'd say about Man. half. But that's half, that's not half of the shots you take, is it? That's half of the compositions you, yeah, so you try I, out. I might, I might be framed up you know and i might be behind the camera for half an hour taking <clears throat> the same photo over and over again then i will choose that one yeah. photo out of that particular composition that mm. i that i like and if i done right. if, if i did 10 tripod stops for want of a better word um yeah you know kind of perhaps four or five out of them i might think right mm. that's worthy of editing yeah and then how many would you say let's say let's say out of those five or on this, let's say out of a year's worth of landscape photography how many shots would you be happy with that you would say were real portfolio keepers oh that's tough that i don't know i don't think i could answer that because i've i've taken <clears throat> you know i've been taking more wildlife than than landscape just recently and, and i've had some 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 fantastic um uh, photos so i don't know combined because i don't go out obviously every week so i don't know 20 20 photos a year that i think i'm really really happy that and, and I'm, I, i'd print that i think the point i'm trying to get at is i think that 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 it can be really easy for people to think that every time you go out you're going to get a portfolio worthy shot or every time you go out you're going to get a really good shot or a good shot not no. it doesn't often happen like and all of us all of us no matter who you are no matter whether you're charlie wait or, or 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 you know charlie chaplin yeah no matter who you are <laughs> you're not going to take hundreds and hundreds of, of fantastic shots every year you just get a select few and you're not going to always go out and have a successful you know because because sort of mark saying that he gets on a bit of a downer when he gets back from the shoot and looks at his images but we're all like that aren't we we don't yeah. you know we're, we're all none of us go out and go oh wow look at me i've got you know 25 keepers out of these 45 shots mm. you know i think there's generally one or two shots that you've taken on a shoot if, if you've taken them and you feel i like that i think that works 
that's a good conversation I can't wait to get back and edit that I think there's normally one or two that you'd probably go directly to and see whether you, you know, can get out of it what you wanted to um, but that's few and far between really for me generally when I go out uh, uh, you know I'll I'll take no more than 20 shots 25 shots something like that when I go out not not a lot and you know some of them could be bracketed for instance so you know there's there's not a lot of shots I'll take and out of that I will probably then look at them all and see which ones are worth editing and probably edit three of them four of them something like that mm -hmm. and out of that I'll be lucky if there's one that I think is portfolio that that's very few and far between if I get one that I think is that level uh, you know my portfolio shots of the year are probably half a dozen I should think in a year that I think I'd be really happy with to be proud to say yeah you know put that on the wall or whatever um, but I think also you know Darren made a fair point about depending on what you're shooting whether it's wild or landscape and landscape is something that you would be more considered about so you're not continually firing the button but it also depends on the conditions doesn't it you know you just mentioned this morning guys you went out in foggy conditions you know i'm like that if i go out in foggy conditions i'm shooting all the over the place because it's you know all of a sudden you've got compositions there you want to go so you take a lot more if you've got really good conditions mm. if you haven't you'd be a lot more considered about what you're going to be taking to try and get the best mm. out of the conditions that you've got yeah and yeah. um, so i mean for 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 me as well, I'd, I'd say, um, as you say, it very much depends on the subject. If I'm shooting a seascape because it's changing over time and if the light's changing, I will take hundreds of photos and often they'll be pretty much the same. Um, and I might select maybe five images to edit out of that, of which you know maybe one or two, because they might be quite similar, maybe one or two I might end up using. Um, things like mountains, the number of images I will take will be much less unless it's changeable conditions in which case i'm shooting whenever i see nice light will appear um but it and then wildlife will be hundreds if not thousands of photos for me i tend to take take loads and loads and loads and then edit very few um but it's actually it's one of the things that i find doing youtube videos um really helpful for actually because i think if if i didn't make videos quite often i'd go out and i'd take images which at the time I thought were okay and get back think they're mediocre and not use them but because I'm making a video I'll normally want sort of three or five images to put into the video and so I'll select those for from a trip and and most of what I film tends to result in a in a photo that will end up in a video mm. but I have a sort of scale where I think of you know there's images which I consider good enough to put onto a YouTube video but they definitely won't end up in my portfolio, or yeah. they probably won't end up on on the website. Um, so it's it, and and when it comes to kind of portfolio level things, I think I'd be doing well with twelve in a year. Um, mm. I think that's that that I would consider to be. A, a, I mean, that seems to be the magic number, doesn't it? That's what they mm. say. If you can get one a month, um, then you mm. then you're doing well. Mm. Yeah, you make a really good point about the YouTube thing. I think if I go out and I film a YouTube, uh, film a video, if I can get four images that I can put in that video, then I feel like I've had a good day. Any more than that is a bonus. But not all of those images would go onto my Flickr account. So I don't have a website, but like, the, the, you know, there's often, it's, it's, it's funny, there's stuff you put on YouTube, I guess because you've got a story behind it and you're explaining it, that you, if you were just out taking photos, that wouldn't even see the light of day, yeah. like you said. So, yeah, I, I just think that it's, yeah, we're, we're, I think we're all in the same boat. None of us go out there and take hundreds of brilliant shots all the time. None of us. If I look back over my, you know, I can go back six, seven years or what have you, year on year, I'm ending up with fewer photographs in each annual folder. I start a new folder each year. And uh, Kind of two or three years ago, I'd probably say that there were maybe 200 images getting into that folder across the course of a year, including all the YouTube filler images that just about make the grade to go on a video, but you know don't go anywhere else. And also, very often when I'm um, promoting a video on social media, I'll very often literally only share what I consider the best mm. image. Mm. So I, d I don't do multiple, oh, look, yeah, don't forget to watch this video. Here's a link and here's another image. Mm. Because 
uh, often I look at them and think well, they're not even good enough for social media. Mm -hmm. They were video filler images. Um, but what I have noticed is that overall um, I'm probably processing two images a week so about a hundred images a year now and I think that and that results from far fewer shutter activations because um, even when I get great conditions and for me it's not often mist we don't get much mist around here it, it's dramatic light in the hills or dramatic seascapes um, and like yourself um, Sam if I'm pointing at a seascape the only thing that's changing in the image is the is the movement of the water, the actual composition, the rocks, the foreshore, or whatever else. It's on a tripod, and I'm just taking a lot of shots. So in effect, it's it's one image that I'm trying to create. The fact that I fire the shutter multiple times isn't relevant. But I'm much more judicious. So in the mountains, a good example is I was, I was in the mountains a couple of weeks ago, and I had fabulous light, and I still only took three images, which was... I think six exposures because there was a couple of exposure blends um, and all three of them I really liked and they're, they're not portfolio don't get me wrong but they're in my processed images folder and and you know I'd be happy to share them uh, but in the past with that light I just like you know you Jamie with the mist in the trees like, oh that's great that's great that's great when actually it isn't mm. you're kind of mm. seduced by the conditions mm. And so I've kind of trained myself a little bit to go, well, actually, what is the best use of these conditions? Let's concentrate on that as if I didn't have the conditions. And, and I, I find I end up in the end with, a, with a fewer but better images. Um, but I, I, I mean, if I sold my gear second hand, you know, number of shutter activations, it, it would be, MPB would say, oh, they're like new, because I don't fire the shutter very often. Mm. So there's an interesting spin-off question to that then. So we've all said there that we really only edit a very small percentage of what we take when we're out. So all the rest of them, what do we do with them? Do we just leave them, leave them on our hard drive <laughs> or do we get rid of them? I've got a, I've got a, I've got a folder that says in capitals to delete and every time I, I come out I, I look through all my photos and then a thousand photos 1500 photos that I'm discarding I put them straight into that to delete folder and then I delete them straight away do you really you're ruthless yeah, <clears throat> yeah. yeah I've, I've been off unused raw files I mean if I've got a finished image I've either got one raw file or two or three or whatever comprise that image. That's it. Anything that doesn't get processed gets binned every time. So I'm I'm the complete opposite, and I, and and Hannah gets really wound up by me because I I just I, I import all the raw files and then I keep them. But I'm I'm learning now not to do that, um, mainly because of the R5 and the file size is so huge, especially if I'm doing wildlife photography. And you get thousands of images. So now I'm being selective when I'm importing because you, you, often you'll end up with 15 photos of the same thing and you just have to try and choose which one is best. And they're all pretty much identical and you spend half an hour trying to choose between them. Um, and I've now got to the point with, I, you know, I can't afford to just upload everything into my hard drive. So I'm becoming, yeah. I wouldn't say I've become ruthless, but I'm learning to be more ruthless and I'm going through old raw files and thinking, am I really going to do anything with this and just deleting mm. them? I, I'd like to refer back to the original question, actually, because I got the impression from how it was worded that you know you get back and you've had a traf terrific time on location and then you look at your SD card and you, you're like, oh, oh, that really wasn't what I was expecting. And I, I must admit, I, I, I never have that. I, I always think that it doesn't matter if I've got a pile of crap on the card. I've still had a fabulous time, hmm. what, whatever conditions were thrown at me. And for the most part, when, I, when I'm processing my images, I absolutely love processing. I love it. So it's just, oh, yeah, I've had a, a photo shoot. I've had a nice time on location. And I get to sit here for a few hours on a rainy afternoon with a bottle of scotch or whatever and play with my pictures and and you know replace a few skies brilliant i've i found i found that the further away i get from taking the photos the happier i am with them so oh. 
Last I week, the, I turned this one off, but my work phone just went. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god, you just can't trust him. Oh. Daz, do you want to go and do something now, quickly? Just to no, make, I'm good. No, you're all right. No, I'm good. Yeah. Thanks. No, I was saying that I find that the further away I get from my images lately, the happier I am with them. So I started off by when, like, when I first started photography, I was always like, get home, get home, edit, 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 and I still do that. But quite a few times recently, I've looked at my edits and gone. Oh, I don't, I don't like these photos very much. But then, give it a, a week or two weeks, I go back and look at them and go, actually, do you know what? They're right. Yeah. And I, I wonder whether I'm just that's just a me expecting more out of my photography these days. But you know, I'd say that if you go home and you look at your stuff and you're disappointed, we'll just park it for a little while and then come back and look at it yeah. again later on. And you but might I'm find sure your... we've all done this as well. We've all <clears throat> been out on a shoot. And you think, oh, I can't wait to get home to, to look at that photo. And then you get home and it isn't quite as good as you was hoping it to be. And then mm. there's some other photos that you took, which you've not given a second thought. But when you got them on the big screen, you start mm. looking at it, you think, this has really got potential. I didn't, mm. I didn't quite mm. realise that when I was behind the camera, mm. how much potential this image has got. I've, I've, I've done that quite a few mm. times. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm like Sam, I don't delete stuff just for that reason, just in case you do sort of have that rainy afternoon um, and you want to go back through your archives and just have a fresh look at them. And those ones that you're focused on, because when you got home, they're the ones you wanted to edit, the ones that you ignored, uh, there's a, potentially a few gems in there. Well, I, I do quite regularly go back and re-edit or find photos which I haven't edited, which I took years ago and I'll work on them because I might have overlooked them at the time or thought maybe I was so concentrating on the image which when I after the trip I thought was the best image and then I'll go back and I'll see something where I just took a, a quick snapshot in, the, in, the, in a different direction and I look at that two years later and I think actually that's a really nice image so I'll re-edit it. Mm. Um, I think it's interesting when you go back and uh, not so much ones you haven't edited but go back and re-edit mm. something that you did edit and then compare them mm. because for me it's night and day sometimes. I sort of look back on the one that I put out really proudly on my Facebook. Oh, look, look at this great image. I'll, three years later, oh, shit, I can't believe I shared that. Three years, in my instance, is about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and on the subject of deleting files, I haven't deleted a raw file since 1987, I don't think. So what you can't see is over there in the corner, I've got a stack of hard drives like right up to the ceiling. Oh, no, I couldn't yeah. do that. That's a bit, oh. But you know, yeah, especially no. as you say with wildlife. This so this is my this is my procedure with wildlife. I'll un, I'll load them all into Lightroom, and then I'll go through and I'll just I'll highlight the ones that I like in red. But you know what with wildlife, you know, especially when you're shooting at I don't know, fifteen twenty frames a second, you know, a lot of them are like pretty much identical anyway. So I just kind of choose like the ones that I like. And out of that, say, 1,000, I might end up with 40. So then I'll straight away, I, 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 I delete the 960, and then I'm left with 40. And then I'll go through them in more detail, and I'll start starring them. One star, two star, three star. And then sometimes I'll end up with, uh, you know, because some of them... No okay, sleep. So, some of them... <laughs> <laughs> what? Sometimes you'll end up with no sleep. Well, it, it, that's a process, isn't it? Like, you, 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 you red thingy them and then you star them. What do you do after that? Do you delete the stars and restar them and then have another no, look no, and then no, green no, I'm, thingy I'm them and then... <laughs> Sorry, right, so I was really lost then. Because I thought it was, it was going to be some sort of reference to a pop song or something. I don't know why, because I'm thinking no sleep. That's don't was, sleep. Five, yeah, don't sleep. That's what I was thinking of, yeah. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> no carry on with your process i want to know what you do after you start no so them. yeah so i'll end up with say 40 and then i'll, I'll one star two star three star them and then that's not, it not I, might end up, I might end up with five star i could do rain or shine <laughs> and um and uh yeah i might have kind of three images or something out of that that thousand you know but that's that's what i do because you've got to be ruthless especially yeah. when you're shooting Land, uh, wildlife in raw crikey that yeah, would just no, get that. You'd fill that up yeah. within six months one of them big 
five terabyte hard drive. You're harsh on yourself yeah. then. You don't give any of your stuff four or five stars. No, no. not good enough. No. Not good enough no. for that. What would get a five star image from Daz? Would, would it be a unicorn image? or <laughs> a uniform feeding a kingfisher? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't a know. backlit unicorn. Yeah, mm. no, I don't know. On the summit of a volcano that's erupting, yeah. crapping, crapping rainbows <laughs> in the mist, <laughs> in infrared. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> With the autumn effect on. <laughs> Unicorns Is come with their own autumn effect. Do they? Yeah. Oh, Ooh. okay. Magic stardust. <laughs> oh, we've run out of things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, we have. <laughs> I thought we did that run about halfway through series one. Yeah, so so as you're talking about old images, which... Um, and, and sort of going back and, and wanting to re-edit them, I, I recently went and logged back into my old Vero account. So I opened up a Vero account a few years ago when it was, um, I think it was when Nick Page was first talking about Vero. And I used it for about three days and then didn't use it again. And then deleted it off my phone. And then obviously it seems to be becoming a thing again. Um, but I, I logged into it and of course it only had old photos from about, four years ago of mine which I'd posted on it and they all looked awful um, so I think I'm going to have to go in and re-edit those yeah. and yeah but I think so what is this thing with Vero then because I've never had it and why what, 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 what is it is it like Instagram kind of thing and why is it making such a popular it, comeback it's not like That's Instagram it's so much better than Instagram have you not seen the videos like Vero Instagram, which one's better? Cross on Instagram, tick on Vero. You have not seen that? Is there an arrow on the thumbnail? Yeah, you not seen that? Um, Pointy point. It, it, it seems to be. It seems to be. I don't know. I think it was Peter McKinnon, to be honest with you, who started it all off again. He's clearly had Vero contact him and say, "Please push Vero," because he was sort of saying about Vero versus Instagram, and. Uh, it is true. I will say this is true. I I had Vero same same as you, Sam. I've had Vero for a good few years now, and I stopped using it because the software was buggy. It was things didn't load, and it took hey, forever to load anything up yourself, and you couldn't see anyone else's feed. The one thing with it is is there's no algorithm on it, so you see all the photos in a chronological order from when they're posted from people you follow, and it sits on the last one. So when you open it up. It's got the very last one you looked at and you can scroll all the way through to the latest one, which I really like. Because let's face it, Instagram is pretty much full of adverts and it's also, it, it feeds what you think, what it thinks you want to see or what it's telling you to see. Um, but, um, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> but, it was no, going I got so it. well. But, but I think there's going to be a catch with it. And I think the catch is going to come down the line because you can't have that many... Vero can't be asking that many prominent people to push it if they're not making any money out of it. So where does their money-making model come in down the line? Because it's totally free at the moment. So what are they getting out of it? Yeah, well, these, these things always end up going down that, that road eventually, don't they? They'll, they'll, they'll get to the point where you know it starts off... I mean, even in Instagram probably not that I knew because I didn't I didn't used to use Instagram years and years ago but when I'm sure when it first started out it was probably a lot better than it is now um and it, it's just for pattern that these things these things follow YouTube as well yeah Twitter wasn't monetized when it started and they went about five years they supported themselves with investment rounds uh and and then kind of got to the point where they were you know they had one arm pushed up behind their back by the investors saying you have to make some revenue and that's when yeah. things started to get cluttered with ads everything will eventually get to the stage where you know they have the shareholders who need to be kept happy and that's what it boils down to mm, yeah I, I personally don't see the point in it <laughs> I, I, and I, I'm, I'll explain what I mean I've used it the same as you back in the day uh, and I had images on there the same as you Sam and I looked at it again more recently I thought Christ I might need to take them off they're crap um, but it's a bit like Flickr isn't it and I'm sorry Gary I know you use Flickr a lot and, and the rest of it but it's a it's a way of sharing good 
you know, to, to see them in a good quality. So it's not like Instagram where it's cropping to a square or whatever. So you can see the images in a good quality. So if you do want to look at somebody's images at a high quality, then that's a good medium to look at it. But surely as a photographer or somebody that wants to share their images, you know, you need to be pointing them to your website or you need to be pointing them to a medium where they can actually then enjoy them properly on a full screen and then take some action, i.e. order a print or contact you or, or whatever. Because all it is... Well, I think social social media is, you know, anybody using it sensibly would use it as a funnel, whether it's Facebook, Vero, whatever, to funnel people to, to your website. Mm. If, if, if you're just using the social media platform, you're absolutely right. Mm. But I think the other thing about Vero is that it isn't, you know, we're looking at it as photographers, and it is trying to be more than just a photography mm, platform. Um, so, you know, their, their, their shtick is that they are, as Gary said, algorithm three, you, uh, free. You follow somebody and you get every, every bit of garbage they publish turns up on your feed. The, the, the only thing I have a problem with it is that whilst you're right, it, it, when you go back into it, it's back where you last looked. So you then come forward chronologically. The problem I have with it is that I usually look at it on my desktop. When I look at it on my phone and I see, oh, blimey neck, I'm, I'm back in August because I haven't looked at it on my phone. It doesn't sync that point and they need to sort that out. Yeah, it, I, I do get what you're saying about funneling everything to your website because everything I do is funneled towards my wait, No, wait, I don't have a website. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've not even posted on Instagram for, for ages. I mean, everything that I post on is is Twitter. That's all I really yeah. use now. I mean, yeah. I, had, I had a Flickr account. I've still got a Flickr account, I think. I don't know the login code, but so that's still floating around there somewhere, but never post on that. Um, do post on Instagram now and again, but as I say, for me, if I want to share anything, I, I tend to share on Twitter because I feel that I know like more people on Twitter than I do on Instagram. Mm. You know, like mm. you guys are on it and, you know, you, uh, and it, there's a lot of other people that I know on Twitter. I think, oh, they might appreciate looking at this photo where Instagram, I don't know, it's a bit more of mm. just, just, I don't know, loads of random likes. Twitter is, is not just photo sharing, is it? It's status sharing. So you get to know people because you get to hear about their day or whatever they want to give you, their opinion. Whereas yeah. Instagram is literally just photos. So there's loads of people who, if I put a photo up on Instagram, I'll get a number of people who like it, who I recognise them, but I have no idea who they are. I have no idea about anything about their lives. But if I go on Twitter and go, oh, I'm going to mention him again this week, Stuart McGlennon's like my... F I know Stuart. I know Stuart because I know him from Twitter and I also know him like from on here but you feel like you're right you feel like you know people on twitter you mm. feel like even though you don't like andrew atkinson for instance never met him before never spoke to him really uh like uh, personally spoken to him maybe once or twice via the medium of twitter but i feel like i know him a bit because i look at his posts and i you get a flavor of their personality from their posts don't yeah. you so mm. yeah 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 i mean there's nobody on instagram that i kind of have a connection with that but or, well unless they've come from the twitter world or they are generally like friends of or family of mine you know whereas yeah. on twitter i'm not saying i've made friends on twitter but i've kind of had a lot of backwards and forwards conversations with people on twitter and you feel that you kind of do know them without actually mm. meeting them because mm. as you say you know they'll share their opinions not just their but, a photo but purely from a from a sh photo sharing standpoint if you're sharing your images on twitter facebook or instagram they're being compressed or restricted somehow because instagram won't allow certain aspect ratios whereas if you're sharing your photo on Flickr or vero you don't have that restriction and you're getting your full quality image appearing on on that platform so that's the appeal for me although saying that vero i you know i've I've been on it a bit i'll be honest with you i post on vero because i go, oh, i've got some new likes on old photos and that's really sad but that's what i've done you know is for is high res images important though i mean james burns commented on 
um, a, a, a picture that I put up on Twitter the other day um, of, of that, that female bearded tip. <laughs> was Dave sucking away on... What are you sucking on, Dave? Quavers or something? <laughs> Whatever it is, it's yeah. noisy. <laughs> As soon as he came in with them, I just thought, oh, here we go. Oh, my God, look, Michelle's thoughts. Brilliant. <laughs> they go very well with... Uh... Moose. Go on, Darren, I was glued to what you were saying. Can I just say, editing last week was a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, Daz. Um, yeah, James, James liked... He was really complimentary about um, uh, like this female bearded tit that I, that I put on. But it was so heavily cropped, you know, my camera's 50 megapixel, and by the time I'd finished cropping that photo, it was two megapixels. So what I'm saying is, I don't know, sometimes if you're just putting it on social media, is this amazing quality necessary? Well, I, I think it is. I think, I, th I think there's a place for Twitter and, and Instagram and Facebook and all of those, definitely. But like, I've had comments from people saying, I saw your photo on YouTube and now I've seen it on Flickr. I can really appreciate it a lot more because I can actually see it as it's meant to be. And it's a lot better than I thought it was because I'm looking at it on Flickr in full res. Fair enough. Mm. So mm. for me, you know, purely from a, a photo sharing standpoint, I like those platforms because you can put your work out and show it at its best. So what platform do you think gets the most traction out of oh, Flickr, well, Twitter, Instagram, Vero? Because it's if you Instagram, you're, I think. Do you think so? Yeah. It, 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 isn't that isn't that going the sort of TikTok route yeah, though? I mean, it's, it is, it's, yeah. its demographic is getting younger and younger because it's desperate to compete. What I do with my images, I put them all on my website. So that's, every time I publish that's a video, exactly what I was coming to, Dave, because I was yeah. saying because Dave's the one that uses his website as his website should be used. Mm. So you could put up low res images on social media and just say, if you want to view the high res version, come to my website. That's mm. Dave's the one that uses it right. I don't have a website though, so no. So Flickr. Well, it's not to stop you having a website, Gary. You have access to server facilities and you've got the technical ability. Yes, I know. I should sort out a website. Really, I know. I know. I know. Only there can you build me one. There you yeah. go. Two grand. We can sort that out. <laughs> I find I find them a pain to keep updated though. I mean, I mean, I I have a square Squarespace website, and I guess it's not very complicated to upload a, a new picture to the gallery. But for for me personally, I just find it. I, I never think of just adding photos to the website, and then the photos. No, but I, what I do is I put a post up every time I release a video, and the images that are in the video accompany that post. Yeah. So. Yeah. On the images that I take in between videos that I put on social, I'll write a blog post maybe once a month. And so these are the ones I've taken recently that weren't on videos. And it, it takes 30 seconds and it, it just keeps things chugging along. But that's along. why it's not a good idea for me to have a website, you see, because I'll start writing blog posts. And remember what happened last time I was writing blog posts. I got into trouble for writing controversial blog posts. So well, That's why you should do it. <laughs> yeah, your yeah. website, your rules. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam, you need to get some sponsorship organ. Are you actually using the site and not not getting sponsored for oh, they're it? They're not going to sponsor me. Why not? They sponsor everybody <laughs> else. <laughs> by the way, by the way, can actually can you just say this, Sam, like into the microphone? Yeah. Can you say this video is sponsored by Squarespace? <laughs> this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Do you not think that he's got the the best AS is it ASMR? The best ASMR voice I think I've ever heard in a photographer. You should literally really? do ASMR photography. You should go. I'm taking a shot of these mountains. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna look great. ISO 100. <laughs> see, see my point. It's my, it's my nice, it's, oh, it's my nice mic. <laughs> Women all over the country now, Sam are going, Oh, say some more. Yeah. Say some more. <laughs> Hannah's just passed out outside. That door. <laughs> Talk to me about ISO. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. What were we saying? <laughs> I've forgotten. Yeah, I'll tell you what I watched last night Midnight Express. Oh, 
retired. I oh. watched that. That was a long time ago. I know. I know. I that guy watching... got done for drugs. Uh, yeah. At the, at the end, he ended up in a, a like a Hong Kong prison. Turkish. Or something. Yeah. Turkish. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. What's that going to do with ASMR? <laughs> I don't know. I just. Uh... <laughs> And it, I, 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 I was listening to. Vera, don't tell me. Don't tell me. You work oh, with Vera. someone. You've worked with someone called Pear, and you work with someone else called Oni. <laughs> <laughs> no, Carla and Berg. Oh. No, I, I um, I, I tell you what. This is a topic for next week, right? And I did put it on the spoiler alert. I, I did put it on the topics group as you guys were chatting about Vero, whatever it is. And uh, do we trust the big influencers? Ooh. Ooh. Stay tuned for that. We will and talk I'll, about that next uh, week. Yeah, we should, because it's when you said... Um, Peter McKinnon. Peter McKinnon, yeah. Yeah, and if anybody else has got some good topics you want us to uh, chat about, please drop me in the comment section, because, um, yeah, your, your, your ideas are far better than ours. Yeah, and also, yeah. actually, I've said yeah. this before, if you want to record a video for us... We would happily put your video on here and then talk about it afterwards. So if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to have a rant about something or you want to ask us a question or equally, you can just ask us a, ask us a question in the comments. But yeah, it would be much appreciated because, you know, next week is literally do we trust big influencers and would you rather have an arm for a leg or a leg for an arm? I love uh, to <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, before we go, um, Nikki Fultz, who's a long-time viewer, put something in the comments last week, and we all just wanted to say that we're all thinking of you, and we hope that we've brought you a little bit of light relief again this week, so in these difficult Absolutely. times. So, yeah. uh, look, we're going to go now. Um, thanks ever so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And until next time, uh, bye for now. Bye-bye. See you, guys. Bye-bye.